Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to cover the third unit of NCERT Geography, Class 7. We are going to study about lithospheric plates and why they move and what are the forces behind their movement. So, let's get started. First, let's see what is lithospheric plate. The Earth's lithosphere. That is, Earth's crust is broken into several pieces. We call these pieces as lithospheric plate. We can also call it a tectonic plate. The plates are like a large slab that has an irregular shape. And the lithospheric plates, it comprises both continental and oceanic crust portion of Earth. Do you know, these plates move few millimeter every year and it happens due to Earth's internal movement. Inside our Earth, they lie molten magma. Molten magma is nothing but a hot liquid. The molten magma that is inside Earth rotates in a circular manner and the constant motion of the molten magma makes the lithospheric plates to move. Our Earth's movement are mainly of two forces. One is endogenic force and the other one is exogenic force. The word endo means inside. These forces occur within the earth. Likewise, the word exo means outside. These forces happen on the earth's exterior part. And the word genic means origin, that is the starting point. There are two types in endogenic force. One is sudden force and the other one is diastrophic force. Sudden forces are quick and sudden. Examples of uh, this force are uh, earthquake, volcano and landslides. Whereas diastrophic forces are slow, they, are, they occur in a very gradual manner. A good example is mountain formation. Now let's see about the endogenic forces in detail. First come volcano. Volcano is an opening in earth's crust through which lava, ash and gases escape. Lava is the molten magma that comes to earth's surface. And volcano burst occur due to endogenic force, that is the forces that comes from the earth's interior. In this image, you can see the fumes of gases and ashes that are coming from a volcanic mountain. Crater is a circular depression, also said as vent or opening. From these, the magma and gases erupt. Next come earthquake. When lithospheric plates move, a vibration occur on Earth's surface and we call this vibration as earthquake. A place where this vibration starts on Earth's crust is called focus. And the place that is above the focus is called the epicenter of the earthquake. Vibrations usually travel outside the epicenter in waveform. During earthquake, places that are close to the epicenter faces the most damage and the strength of the earthquake declines as they move away from the center. The earthquake vibration move in waveform and there are three types in them. They are P, S and L waves. These are also said as longitudinal transfers and surface waves. Can we predict the earthquake? No, we can't predict the earthquake. However, by studying the animal behavior, we can do so. For example, reptiles like snake, they come to surface. They can feel the earth's vibration before us. Likewise, fish on the pond, they get agitated. We can measure the earthquake with seismograph. It is a machine that helps to identify the magnitude, that is the severity of the earthquake. And it is measured in Richter scale. Whenever the magnitude is above 7, it means it is very severe and it is called a major earthquake. Next come landslide. This is how the landslide will be. That is, a mass land falling down the slope is called landslide. Now, let's see about exogenic force and their activity. Two geological processes occur on Earth. One is weathering and the other one is erosion. Earth's landscape worn away due to these geological processes. Weathering is the breaking up of rock. Whereas erosion is the wearing away of landscape that are caused by natural agents like wind, water, air, ice, etc. And on erosion process, these natural agents drop their carries along the way. 
as these deposits build up we call them deposition and the geological process of erosion and deposition creates different landforms on earth surface now let's see how the natural agents like wind water ice etc work first come river let's see how they work a river originates from mountain and this rushing water erodes the landscape as the water flows in a quick manner when they fall down on steep valley and hard rock they form a waterfall the world's highest waterfall is in angel falls that is in venezuela which is in south america likewise there are falls like niagara which is on the uh, us and canada border likewise uh, we have victoria falls that is in the border of uh, zambia and zimbabwe of africa waterfall are often formed when a layer of hard rock overlaps the layer of soft rock the rushing water has high energy so the falling water undercuts the soft rock and also erodes its material and deposits it elsewhere and the hard rock that is left overhanging collapses eventually as there is no support the fallen rock crash into the plunge pool plunge pool is nothing but a deep basin or cavity at the foot of waterfall and here the fallen rocks swirl around and they make more erosion and when the river enters the plain region they make sharp bends and we call them meander a continuous deposition and erosion occur on meander the erosion occur on the outside bend whereas deposition occur inside due to the continuous erosion and deposition activity the meander loop come closer and closer and cuts off from the main river and we call this cut off lake as oxbow lake sometimes the river overflows its bank they flood the neighboring region they deposit their sediments and make the land fertile therefore we name them flood plain and the raised bank along the river are called leaves and finally the river reaches sea as they come in contact with sea they flow decreases and the river begin to break into many streams and we call these streams distributaries as the water flow is low the river starts to deposit its eroded material each distributary form its own mouth and the landform that was created by the deposit of the sediments are called the delta region now let's see how sea waves work coastal landforms are created by erosional and depositional activities done by waves they make beaches stacks sea caves and arches when sea waves hit the rock crack develops on them and eventually water erodes the rock that result in the making of hollow like cave we call this as a sea cave with time and continuous striking of sea wave their cavities become bigger and bigger only the roof of the cave remain we call this as a sea arch further due to erosion the roofs are broken and only the wall remain and we call this feature as stack in this picture you can see a sea cave that became a sea arch and further into a stack this is sea cliff it's a large steep rock that lie almost vertically above sea level and we call this structure as sea cliff the next topic is working of ice the glaciers that are on mountains are nothing but a river in ice form when they melt they erode the landscape and they leave a deep hollow behind the eroded materials like sand soil and silt that are carried by the glacier gets deposited and we denote these deposits as glacial moraine next comes the working of men this is a picture of desert and these are called sand dunes an agent that makes erosion and depositional activity in desert is wind the rocks in desert are of mushroom shape 
the winds erode the lower section of rock than the upper portion this gives the structure of narrow base and a wider top so it look like a mushroom when wind blow they carry the sand from one place to another and they drop them up when they stop blowing their deposits forms a low hill like structure and we call this as sand dunes when the sand grains are light and more fine the wind can carry them even to a longer distance when those sands are deposited in a large area we call them loess and a large deposit of loess is found in china thus we have come to an end hope the lesson is useful and thank you so much for watching please do give a thumbs up also share and subscribe our channel for more content